Hello, Jan here from Into the Woods. I am continuing my basket making odyssey and um, with the last light of the day I thought I'd come out to my willow piles and tell you a little bit more about different kinds of willow. So people have been making baskets for a long time and during that time we have bred lots of different varieties of willow rods um, just like we've bred lots of different kinds of carrots and potatoes and cauliflowers we've bred lots of different kinds of willow for different jobs some willow will grow big fat strong rods like this really bold others will grow very fine material so clearly you would use this for making log baskets or in past times when we use baskets for other things for making um, the post office would use great big baskets on wheels to put all of its parcels in now we probably got plastic trolleys but um, so we had a use for this big strong stuff which we don't use so less so much these days I don't think and then fine stuff that we would make delicate little sewing baskets shopping baskets um, and again all kinds of household items that needed to be smaller more fine and light obviously if they're smaller they're also shorter so we're making a smaller object um, so here I have two rods of the same length. One of them I grew in my garden. That's my standard green um, basket making one that I bought. I bought it as a rod and planted it. I'll tell you in another video about how, to, how I grow my willow. Um, and this one I found down the lane, growing wild. Um, it's probably a goat willow, a wild willow. And I went and cut these this year because they were such beautiful colours. And I want to incorporate those colours into my baskets. There is a difference if we take a close look at these two here. First of all, I hope you can see that though they are the same length, the one that's been cultivated is thinner, finer than the one that is wild. So that's one of the things that we're aiming to do when we're breeding willow is to make them as long and thin as possible. Um, we can be more creative with a longer piece. Also the resistance. So this is kind of stiff and tough and woody and if I bend it there's going to be a crack like that. This one is much more pliable there's much more give in it and it's much more forgiving I can take it much further before I get that kink so there's a, a difference in the way that I can use this material this is more versatile and more forgiving than this another thing that we can see is that this one has a curve where it's grown up out of the ground from the stool so the stool is here and all of these have grown up like that and where they come out of the stool they've developed a little curve this one is more straight because it's been growing on a vertical stem and then it's grown out from the stem like that and it hasn't got that it's called the back and the belly so this is the back and this is the belly now when we're basket making this back and belly can do a job for us. It can put more tension into the basket and so make the basket stronger. So when we're putting the rods into the base, if we do it against the will of the belly, and oh, sorry, you can't see, um, put it in like that and then bend it up and kink it, this belly has been opened out and it's forevermore going to be trying to bend back and so it's going to give us tension and strength in the in the finished product um, not so much with these but also very often with the wild willows they've got much bigger buds can you see the buds there 
I don't know. Can you see them? There's a bud. Whereas these have got little tiny buds that have been bred to be just vestigial really. They're just like token buds. They still work, but they're very small. So again, that has an effect on the finished product. You get a much smoother finish from a cultivated willow. So um, you pay your money and you take your choice, choice really. Um, you can go out into the hedgerows and cut yourself some wild willow for free. And um, you're not doing any harm there. The, the, the farmers are going to come along and they're going to flay it all off anyway. So if you go along just before they do that job, which is around this time of year, February, then you've saved them a bit of time and you've made some use of the hedgerow material. Um, or you c if you have some some land, you can plant yourself a willow patch and grow your own, which means that you can grow um, a great variety of different kinds of willow for different purposes. And it makes it even more interesting to grow your own, to collect your own from the hedgerow. So um, I hope you have some fun collecting your willows. Just go out and just make a little star or something like that. It's such an enjoyable hobby. It doesn't have to be a big basket. There are much smaller projects that you can do. If you go on YouTube, you'll see. I might even do one for you.